Welcome to Burning Man. There's 68,000 of your closest friends, possible lovers, and furthest enemies all gathered together to space take and place make and spend a week or more dedicated to the spirit of self-reliance, collaboration, creativity, and community. Black Rock City, Burning Man is where my story begins. My first time at Burning Man, I was 22 years old and had literally bought the ticket a day after coming home from eight months around the world after meeting Colleen, a goddess featured in that picture who painted the parachute of our dome. I didn't even know what a dome was, but I knew I wanted to go wherever she thought awesome. And Burning Man tickets at the time were really easy to come by. So off I went. I'm really into food. At the face of the event, Burning Man didn't feel like a place for the food curious. I mean, we were squealing with excitement after coming home to get ready for the night, realizing that our pouches of Tasty Bites were already heated up from being in our tents all day. Not the most amazing of gastronomic feats, but it worked for us because we didn't have a way to heat up our food besides sun power. A few years in, without much connection being formed, I realized that I was starting to feel like the wilted kale at the bottom of our gray water dripping cooler. I cared less about the people excitedly running from one workshop to another DJ and their tutus, and I started to really wonder if I'd ever find my place in Black Rock City. I didn't realize it then, but I was really looking into the heart of Burning Man and who creates it. Why were they there? What drove them to keep coming to the desert to participate in this amazing temporary community? Palomar, by the way, she's one of three women who operate heavy machinery at Burning Man, and she's become a great friend of mine. She's lovely. It's amazing how a moment can change your life, and at Burning Man, it may be photographed. It's 2009, and I'm sitting in a Playa Chef lecture learning about Feed the Artist, a project that I'd participate in and eventually run for two years. Feed the Artist was formed with a simple notion. Feed the artists who are working day in and day out for the week leading up to events so they don't die of exhaustion and starvation and keel over before they can share their art with the world. But of course, we fed those artists in true burner form. 2010 was a culminating Feed the Artist year, and I was at the helm of a year of menu planning, food procurement, and shared infrastructure logistics with a bunch of people I didn't even meet till I popped my tent up on the playa that year. We created four dinner theater events that fed 300 to 500 artists, five to seven course meals for over the course of four days before Burning Man begun. This photo is one of the few uh, showing me what would ultimately become my Burning Man calling card. Where's Melissa? Look for that Bonanza truck. That was my first year working on a project that used radical collaboration as a mechanism for large infrastructure possibilities and limited resource camps. AKA, if you want to keep your produce fresh at Burning Man, why not share a big refrigerated truck? I worked with Nitai Das, who ran a kitchen operation hubbed in a FEMA emergency tent. He fed thousands of people over the course of a week at Burning Man, vegetarian food literally off of one pot and one burner in this tent. He passed away the week before my 30th birthday, and every time I accomplish something bigger than I ever thought possible, I send a Hare Ram, Hare Krishna to the heavens. No good Burning Man journey. Story is complete without your run-of-the-mill teepee ceremony and sunrise trash fence adventure that catapults you into your new destiny, right? So there's a picture of that. That's me at the trash fence with my friend Luca after a nighttime teepee ceremony that really changed my life. I didn't know it, but I've been marked as a carrier of infinite possibility. I became the walking image of a vision from a person who weaves people together like an entrepreneur of humanity. As all good adventures should involve disallowed lust and love and hate and pushing boundaries beyond the trash fence, I'll digress for a minute and let you know that I spent three renegade days hiking the roller coaster of the Appalachian Trail, finding myself with this wizard of humanity. In 2011, I came back to lead Feed the Artist, and after our wizard leader had to leave Burning Man early, I was suddenly running Feed the Artist, a 40-person theme camp, an entire site service infrastructure, as well as the first year of my refrigerated, tr refrigerated truck project on my own. We also invited a group of silly Santa Barbara burners to come and share a meal with us before their walkabout woods installation. So the other thing where you're with a partner who won't come to Burning Man and you worry that Playa Love will tear you away, that happened. Enter Charlie Smith and the art of such and such, and the crew of merry hooligan burner pranksters who we fed for two weeks from our tiny kitchen carport held together with zip ties and duct tape and a lot of heart. That's the kitchen in the background. Charlie is a larger than life metal fabricator who can make a 30 foot tall wooden fire cauldron become a cooktop for a barbecue. Um, 2011 was a year of immense stress in many ways. I was overseeing logistics to help connect citizens to over 1600 artists that we fed throughout the event running a 10 camp refrigerator truck, and I knew that my five-year relationship would be over when I came home. 
That's Josh. Uh, in 2012, at his first of two Burning Mans, my friends Liz and Jay adopted him after they fostered him. Uh, he won Burning Man that year. Behind Josh is the only refrigerated, the only picture of the reefer ghetto, which is the year that I run the refrigerator truck solo. Um, where did the CRTP, the Community Refrigerated Truck Project, grew? And in 2013, I found myself offered a job running a fancy camp. I traded my renegade reefer ghetto for the chance to grow a project through a resource healthy camp that provides a bridge between the Burning Man of old and the Burning Man of new. The entire camp is a billionaire's gift to his friends and colleagues, and he pays for us to make it really, really good. The truck now operates as part of this kitchen, which is what we hear as one of the most epic at Burning Man, putting out five-star food that nourishes not only our guests, but also the crew of core burners, who now have the chance to really shine their light at Burning Man, whether as chefs, artists, builders, or performers. <laughs> or someone like me, a logistics nerd that wants to help people have access to fresh food at Burning Man. Derek is a, a disaster relief chef who really enjoys putting on performances like Bananas Flambe without his shirt on. And Uja is a 16-year burner who's found her home in our kitchen, drilling holes into zucchini with power tools. Sharing resources means that refrigerator truck has grown. This year, I ran logistics for 12 camps to load in and live together, including a farmer's market camp, feed the artist, a Burning Man church, and of course, Charlie's crew. They host a legendary breakfast, a pho breakfast at sunrise that burners stock the playa looking for year in and year out. But the fun has only just begun. This year, we used a vendor pass from Fancy Camp as a loophole to offer the Great Basin Food Co-op a chance to test their small store big dream capacity of bringing local food deliveries to Burning Man. We started with six camps, and because of this infrastructure, the food co-op generated $30,000 of income for their store. Ten years ago, if you would have told me that I'd be known as the reefer queen of Burning Man, I would have definitely thought you were talking about a different sort of reefer. That, friends, is how you keep your produce fresh at Burning Man. I tried my best. <laughs>